In this recording, I'll show you how to use the rules facility within QuickBooks. This helps you when you're processing from the bank feed and it helps with consistency and also speed of processing. So here are some examples that I've brought through on a pretend bank feed. And here um, I've got several transactions all coming from the same supplier, same amount, and they will actually all be going to the same nominal code. So I can apply some rules here. So I first of all need to create the rules. So I'll pick on the very first one. So I'll pick on this one here, click it to open it. Um, this is going to be an expense. Always make sure you put the supplier or customer name in. In here, this is where you are going to um, save it to in the nominal. I have a software subscriptions and a subscriptions. I'm going to use that one. This is if I want to relate this to a product or service, which I don't. That's if I'm going to add it onto a customer, which I'm not, and it's not billable to a customer. Um, there's no VAT in this particular one, and I could add location and class if I wish. But the most important thing I'm going to do here is down to create a rule. It's easier to do it from here. You can create rules from here, but it's easier to do it on the fly when the transaction's in front of you. So I'm going to name this rule and I'm going to call it PC support. It's money out, but I can change that to money in. Do I want it to apply to all bank accounts or just this one? There are situations where it might be applicable for all, but in some it's not. I'm going to leave this to my current account. Then you've got various conditions. Most of the time, one piece of information is enough. For this one, it's where the description contains PC support, which as you can see in here, is actually in the description. But it might not be in the description. It could be in the payee. It depends on your bank and how your bank is sending. I find the one that works the best is bank text, which is somewhere in the bank's information. It could be in the payee field, it could be in the description field. And always make sure that says contains rather than is exactly. That usually captures it. What you might find sometimes is that you've got the uh, name and afterwards it's got something like eight in it or it might say April charges or it might have lots of numbers in it. Take all of those out and just leave in the bit that will be common every single time this transaction appears. You could add another condition if you wish. This one could be that the amount is always less than £100. So that if one day they charge you more than £100, you might think, just a minute, I didn't know about that. What's going on? Um, it's optional, but I'm going to leave that in there for the time being. And you can carry on and add further conditions. Then here you say what you want to do with the transaction. I want it to be an expense. That's the nominal code, the payee, the VAT, and all the details that you may want to put in. Now, you've got here, replace bank memo. So you might want to put a bit more information. You might want to put here, computer and email support, just so you've got a little bit more when it gets po posted. Now, by, as, by default, this will be switched on, which means that as soon as the transaction comes into the bank, this rule will be applied and you won't even get a look in. It will just process it, gone, done. You might be happy with that. Personally, I'm not always happy with it. I'd rather check it first and at least cast my eye over it before it gets processed. That's entirely up to you and you can toggle this on and off as you need to, which I'll show you how to come back to in a second. I'm going to save. And what you find now is this rule has been applied to each one of these. And I can very quickly say, yes, I'm happy with those. I can select them all or tick them one at a time and I can click accept here or I can click add one at a time on the right hand side. I will accept and they've all been processed. Now, if there was an issue with that rule or you think I need to check my rules, at the top here, here's rules. This is where they all live. And if you click edit, you'll go back to the familiar screen that you started with and you can make any changes here. Or 
using the drop down, you could disable it or delete it completely or even copy it if there's something else that's similar. You might find sometimes that rules have been applied automatically and it will tell you if it's been automatically applied. This is where QuickBooks tries to help. It sees a regular transaction coming through. It offers, would you like to make this a rule? If the user selects yes, I find it's not always complete. It's not always accurate. So do check them yourself and do make sure they are correct. I hope that's useful.